Today we're going to talk about the ether circulation model in terms of the permanent magnet. In the previous video, I showed you how a loop of wire, how a loop of wire um, affects the, e the surrounding ether. So if you have a loop of wire with current flowing in a counterclockwise fashion, what you're going to get is north circulation on the inside of the coil and south circulation on the outside of the coil. Now, I just want to point out that these ether circulations are extremely exaggerated and that the ether circulations are, are going on everywhere on the inside of the coil and everywhere on the outside of a coil. And so, uh, just to make that point, because this is obviously just a schematic, it is just a representation of what's going on. And so, um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to look at a, a coil of wire. Now, a coil of wire is uh, like a spring, is really just a whole bunch of loops of wire uh, all, in, in, all in one. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a um, coil of wire, and I'm going to animate it and show you, um, and show you uh, how this behaves very similarly to the single loop of coil. And I'm also going to show you how this relates to the permanent magnet. So here we have a spring that I created using my software. As you can see, um, this coil is wound clockwise. So you can see that it comes in here and spirals around and comes out the other side. So one thing you'll notice is when I turn this around, when I turn this around, it is still clockwise. Okay, it is still wound, starts from here and winds clockwise from front to back, from front to back. So when I'm talking about clockwise and counterclockwise windings, I'm always talking from front to back. So this is the view that I am looking at and I see that it is wound um, clockwise no matter which way I, I turn the, um, the coil. So that is the first point that I wanted to make. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate that. I'm going to, um, let's see, let's pick this one here. I'm going to um, simulate the idea of current flowing um, through a coil or flowing along a coil or flowing um, down a coil. And so here you can see I've got the current is coming in this way and it's flowing clockwise down the coil and coming out the other side. So here's where you see a difference. So here, when I'm looking this way, when I'm looking this way, all the coils, so you can think of a, a loop, um, a coil, a spring as a whole bunch of loops of coil. So, uh, or loops of wire. And so each one of these is one coil um, from my, from the diagram that I showed you earlier. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of coils, of circular coils, and they're all, uh, the current is going through all of them at the same time in a clockwise fashion. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the coil around, and what you're going to see now is that even though the coil is wound clockwise, what you see is that um, all the coils, all the current through all the coils is flowing now in a counterclockwise fashion. So if I were to energize a coil like this, so if I were to energize a coil by uh, passing the current through the coil um, in this fashion, so this is going to be clockwise from my point of view and counterclockwise from the other, looking from the other side of the coil. Okay, if I were to um, energize a coil this way, I am this, uh, it is going to create a south pole on this side, okay, because this is um, circulating clockwise and clockwise circulation in a loop 
of wire uh, creates clockwise circulation on the inside of the coil and counterclockwise circulation on the outside of a coil. And if I look at it from this way, I see counterclockwise uh, circulation. And so this is going to create a north pole, north uh, circulation. It's going to generate north circulation on the inside of the coil, and it's going to create south circulation on the outside of the coil. And so um, this is, for all intents and purposes, this is, is a, a magnet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, turn off the colors for a second. Okay, let's go back to this coil. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to flip the coil. Okay, I'm going to flip the coil so that uh, it is now wound counterclockwise. It is wound counterclockwise no matter which way I uh, look at it. I'm just going to move this over um, so that it's more centered. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pass the current through the coil again. Um, and now the coil is wound counterclockwise. So here in this condition, the coil is wound counterclockwise and the current is flowing through counterclockwise. And so what we're going to see is we're going to see north circulation on the inside of the coil and we're going to see south circulation on the outside of the coil. And when I turn the coil around, now you can see that all the coils are, the current going through the coils uh, in a clockwise fashion is going to create south circulation in the middle of the coil, inside the coil. And it's going to create north circulation or counterclockwise circulation. It's going to push the, the um, ether to spin counterclockwise on the outside. So you're going to see south circulation on the inside of the coil and north circulation on the outside of a coil. And so if I energize a... Um, so let's go back here. So uh, here we've got the current flowing from front to back and it is flowing in a counterclockwise fashion. Okay, so the current is coming out here. It's flowing counterclockwise um, towards the back. So if I energize a coil in this manner from where the current is going from front to back, in, the, in this manner, the current in a counterclockwise coil, the current is also going to be going clockwise in all the coils and therefore, um, you know, if I energize a magnet, uh, this is going to be a north pole, and this is going to be a south pole. So that's basically how it works. The winding of the coil doesn't really um, matter. What really matters, so if I wind a coil counterclockwise, but pass the current in from back to front, I'm going to get a different effect than if I pass the current from front to back. So in this case, we have uh, north circulation um, on this side, and we would have south circulation on this side. Or if we energize a magnet, we're going to have a north pole here, and we're going to have a south pole on the other side. So the, the, the way you wind the coil doesn't matter. What matters more is uh, what direction you pass the current through. So if you pass it, say, from back to front, like you're seeing here, you're going to get, um, you know, south in the front and north in the back. But if you pass the current from front to back, so if you pass the current in the opposite direction, um, you are going to get a north pole here and a south pole here. So, uh, so that's what I wanted to show you. Um, I know my friend Carrie showed some experiments on this, but it is very difficult to see because you can't see the current going through the wire when he energizes them. It's really hard to imagine what's going on. So I think this is a bit, is a nice an animation. So you can see um, that as you pass current through a coil that you get uh, similar circulation going on in all the coils. So you can think of each 
of the, you can think, think of each of these turns as one loop of wire, as one loop of wire uh, analogous to what I showed in my schematic. So what I said in a previous video is that a coil of wire is functionally identical to a permanent magnet. Uh, there is literally no difference between a coil of wire and a permanent magnet. And so when you pass a current through a coil, as I showed in uh, the previous section, uh, around a, a solid um, chunk of iron, let's say, what you're going to do is you're going to induce um, cir uh, north circulation on the inside of the, of the magnet. Okay, and so that is going to happen, you know, all throughout the length of the magnet. But um, if you look at a magnet, say just from this from one end, if you look at a magnet from one end, what's going to happen is you're going to see north circulation. So if, let's say, uh, the current was passed counterclockwise uh, down the coil to energize the magnet, to create the magnet, what you're going to see is north circulation on uh, the inside of the solid body, but you are also going to see south circulation on the outside of, of the body. And of course, if you turn the magnet around, you're going to see um, you're going to see south circulation on the inside and north circulation on the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this. Okay, I made a video. And um, so let's talk about Hall sensors. So Hall sensor uh, in a, in a um, device that's used to, you know, detect the poles in the pole finder is a little Hall sensor. And I know I did a bunch of videos with Hall sensors. And so um, if you take a pole finder and um, let's just do this right now. If you take a pole finder and um, look at the inside of the magnet. So here, what I did was, let me just go back a bit and I'll show you that. Um, so this is the north pole of a cylinder magnet. This is the north pole of a cylinder magnet. And this Hall sensor, what I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call this Hall sensor a an ether circulation detector because technically, so in terms of the ether circulation model, I believe this is what the Hall sensor is detecting. And so uh, when you place the the pole finder on the inside um, on the inside of the loop. So now the you know the uh, current is circulating on the outside of the magnet, and or you can imagine that there is current flowing on the outside of the magnet, creating north circulation on the inside. Um, and so I also said it would create south circulation on the outside. So let's see if this is true. So now I'm going to the outside. Okay, there's the inside is north and the outside is south. The inside is north, the outside is south. The inside is north, the outside is south. Okay, I'm not gonna torture with that anymore. As you can see, the ether circulation detector, the pole finder, the Hall sensor, is in fact detecting something different on the inside than on the outside. It's detecting north circulation on the inside and south circulation on the outside. So, um, so the ether circulation model is quite robust. It's very intuitive. It's easy to understand. And it um, makes a prediction. So we kind of made a prediction because I never really thought to do that before until I saw this model. Never really thought to take the pole finder in and bring it outside the magnet to see how it would respond. So this kind of made a prediction that I would see cell circulation on the outside of the this uh, fairly strong neodymium cylinder magnet. And in fact, that is what we're seeing. So this is a little bit of a vindication of this model. It's a good model. It's a good analogy, um, you know. And so in the future, I'm going to take this further. But I think this is enough for now. This is. Um, you know, this is where I wanted to get was talking about the permanent magnet. And as you can see, the ether circulation model does seem to match what we are seeing uh, with the permanent magnet.
So uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. And there will be more videos. Obviously, there's more to talk about. But um, this is, I think, good enough for now. So um, it's my birthday today. So um, if you want to wish me a happy birthday, that'd be great. Otherwise, I hope you guys are having a great day and uh, I will be back.